Hi everybody and welcome to Universal Observations. On this channel I try to point out things that I just couldn't find an answer to online or maybe just to make something a little bit more accessible. Today I'm going to cover the Optech Direct Sync ESX25 focus motor with integrated third links controller. Now I had a hard time finding a focus motor that specifically fit my uh, Explore Scientific ED127 without having to 3D print an adapter or adding extra mounting hardware or longer screws. I, I just wanted something that was designed for the Explore Scientific 2.5 inch um, hex focuser and I found it at Optech. First, I need to mention that the folks over at Optech are not in any way sponsoring this video or channel, but I must say that I spoke to them a couple of times and they were extremely helpful and very patient with me on the phone. So here you'll see uh, what comes with the focus motor. Here on the left, you can see that it comes with an installation guide and a quick start guide. The instructions are very clear and it only took me about five or 10 minutes to install. It also comes with both a 15 foot, which is approximately four and a half meters, and a three foot, slightly less than one meter, uh, USB cables. And um, also it comes with a nice 12 volt DC power supply. By the way, Optech offers a converter that's basically a USB to 12 volt uh, little cable uh, that I have used and it works very, very well and it, and it really helps with cable, cable management. Uh, next here is the little gear hub that uh, when you take the knob off of your focuser, uh, you're going to add this little gear hub to the shaft and then tighten it, uh, tighten the set screw with one of these included little Allen wrenches or uh, also known as hex keys. Uh, finally in the middle is the actual focus motor itself. All in all, everything that you need to remove the knob from your focuser and replace it with this uh, focus motor. All right, so to uh, add this, we're going to take the included Allen wrenches. These three different ones are for removing the coarse uh, focus knob, uh, adding the gear, and then the third will be the set screws to mount the focus motor. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do here is uh, remove the coarse knob off the, uh, uh, the focuser. And that's just uh, the one Allen wrench, just a quick couple of turns, and uh, that should just slip right on off. And here you're going to see the exposed shaft of where we're going to add the uh, gear here uh, in just a second. So we'll grab the little pouch with the gear in it, open that up, and then uh, slide that on the... Uh, uh, shaft and one of the things you want to do is want to make sure that uh, where the set screw goes is that's got to go on the flat spot of the the shaft so make sure you have that aligned and uh, you know got to make sure with the right lighting that uh, you can see where that flat spot is uh, so then line that up and then um, at, at this point it's still free spinning so make sure that it doesn't spin uh, really easy to accidentally nudge that and and uh, uh, make sure that you get again get that on that flat spot uh, and that that's uh, tightened uh, appropriately uh, not too tight you don't uh, this is not going to be a lot of uh, torque on this so it shouldn't be anyway uh, so once that uh, I'm going to make sure that it's uh, free spinning and not binding I lifted the gear up off of the 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 shaft a little bit just to make sure that it wasn't uh, leaning on the collar uh, of the the focuser so the next thing is to take the knob the tensioner knob off of the uh, focuser that comes with the focuser itself with the telescope and the focuser the next thing I'm going to do here is uh, loosen the set screws just to make sure that they're not sticking out any uh, inside uh, housing of the focus motor here and then I'm just gonna slide that over the gear and uh, try to line that up and slide that over the gear here and uh, uh, what I did notice is that uh, just some wiggling around, it doesn't take any force whatsoever. Uh, if it's not properly lined up, uh, you might have to uh, rotate the focus knob or disengage. Uh, but then once I got everything, it just slid right into, right into space uh, there with uh, no, no uh, you'll see here in just a second, it just falls right on once it's uh, uh, ready to go. So... Uh, very very easy and uh, once you get that on then uh, you put the tensioner knob back in place 
and uh, I believe it tells you in the instructions don't uh, don't tighten that down you don't want this to be tight when you um, put the set screw so I back that off just a little bit there off just a little bit there and uh, uh, there we go and then uh, put the set screws in and uh, I go I went back and forth uh, from left side to right side a little bit just trying to make sure that everything was even and kind of stayed centered uh, on here and once I got both of those uh, tightened up uh, then I was pretty much ready to go at this point so uh, uh, once I got everything tightened up I then um, kind of backed away from it a little bit and and uh, made sure that uh, again first of all the tensioner knob was uh, where I wanted it there and that uh, I would disengage uh, the motor and that's just a little very little twist there and uh, then I could move the focuser manually once I engaged it uh, it would no longer move so I knew things were pretty much lined up at that point and ready for plugging and uh, software install all right, so next we're going to plug in the uh, DC power cable. Um, I'm using the power supply here, but uh, again, Optech actually has available on their website a USB uh, power converter. Then I'll plug in the USB cable. Again, they supply uh, both a 15-foot and a 3-foot, depending on how you do your cable management. Right in between the two connectors is a little LED, uh, power LED, which you can control the brightness uh, from the Optech software as well. All right, so here we have the Focus Links Commander software that I downloaded from the Optech website. Uh, very easy to connect. Um, uh, just basically hit the connect button and uh, was able to set up uh, kind of my midpoint there, synchronize that, and uh, uh, then after that, uh, it really was trying it out, in, in my case, with uh, Nina and uh, getting that working and, and focusing and uh, it was real easy and honestly it uh, it worked first or second try uh, that I was out with it and uh, I, so far it's been uh, a, a breeze to use and uh, has gotten things in focus and uh, uh, no more trial and error on my part. I was actually able to do a lot better than what these uh, focus curves show in Nina but uh, after I learned a little bit more about backlash and how to set up uh, in this case the overshoot method and I uh, got it to work uh, very reliable, reliably and very quickly as well. So as you can see from the installation that this uh, Optech uh, DirectSync ESX25 uh, focus motor was uh, <laughs> designed and built for uh, this particular focuser. Here's a little image from the uh, uh, Optech uh, website you can see which um, uh, telescopes come with that two and a half inch hex focuser and uh, which one this was designed for the, although they've got a bunch of different ones for different scopes and different focusers on their website but uh, I highly recommend you check this out if you've got the uh, Explorer Scientific two and a half inch hex uh, focuser. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video if you like the types of things you're seeing click like subscribe to the channel and uh, let us know in the comments of other things that you'd like to see. Thanks again from Universal Observations. And have a great day.